and welcome to Wonder Dad Gaming. I'm Lemon76 of Wonder Dad Gaming. Today, thank you for joining for another review. Uh, we are going to be looking at the Thermaltake TH240 ARGB Sync Snow Edition AIO. Gotta love these names, they're huge. Um, so, I, you know this channel where you're normally known for doing more budget-friendly items, and this is a definitely a budget-friendly item. Um, for AIOs anyways. Uh, last I checked, you can get this on Amazon for about anywhere between $80 to $89. I think it was $80 when the day I checked on this video when I was starting to make this one. Um, this was actually a gift from my wife for our anniversary. So thank you, honey. I love you. Um, because I've been wanting to get an, uh, an AIO for my system because <clears throat> I upgraded to a 3600 uh, Ryzen 5 and I wanted something a little more cooling performance. I looked at a few. Um, Arctic uh, Freezer 2 is a good one. And the EK, uh, EK240 is a really good one too. Um, but this one, of course, is cheaper. Um, but this one also matches my case because it's a white. And, of course, I have a white case. You guys have seen that in a lot of my live streams. So you guys know. And, of course, RGB. I won't lie. I guess I am one of those people that loves RGB. So, what we're going to be doing today, uh, we're going to do, of course, do, we're going to start off with an unboxing, see which comes in the box. Um, I'm not going to do a build video where I put this in. I'll just show you what it, guys, what it looks like when I'm done. Now, currently, I do have the stock AMD cooler that comes with the 3600. I believe it's the Stealth cooler. Um, I'm actually currently running the uh, stress test on it right now, and currently, where we are sitting is 90 degrees Celsius, and it's only been running for about five minutes. So, we're going to do a full run test with the stock cooler, basically the one that comes in the box. And then we're going to be doing putting this guy on here and doing the same test run and seeing what kind of temperature performance we're going to get. So, will this do it better? Will it allow me to keep that overclock? Because I actually do like overclocking these CPUs because they're so easy to overclock, especially if you're using Precision Boost. But you're going to want a decent cooler with it, so... We're going to put this one to the test, and also because I'm using a 240, that will fit in this case, because this is a uh, micro ATX case. So, um, if you do have a larger case, they do make a larger, uh, I believe it's a 360 radiator. So, let's go ahead and get this unboxed. Um, we'll go around the box real fast, see which comes in. Um, as you see on the front, it just says what it looks like. Um, all white, RGB, you know, typical. Now, on the back, um, it, come, it shows you like all this lovely stuff. Where it shows over features um, that it you know uses RGB, that it's a uh, it's compatible with the Zeus, Gigabyte, MSI, ASRock, and BioStar, which I am honestly not familiar with. Um, to do 16 million colors, high performance copper, which is this nice copper cooling plate. Let's be honest, most of these ones here are actually um, there's another company that makes them. It's it's flowing past my mind right now I'll know it later and I'll probably I'll put it right here the company that normally makes these um and they a lot of these companies will go through and they'll put their little brands and stuff on it so anyways um let's see 120 mil fans comes with two of those um low evaporated tubing because yes over time these will evaporate and it's just normal um but this does actually have a fill port so in case it ever does get low I can actually refill this, which is nice. Some some do, some don't. Um, a lot, of, especially a lot of the cheaper ones, they don't have that fill port. But this one does. Um, universal socket mount, and of course, it goes over it, the grass for the temperatures and things like that. But we're going to be putting that to the test. So and that's pretty much it. You got the you know, specifications on the side. Um, pump 3300 RPM. Input speed of the fans 1500 RPM. Basic stuff. This is, okay, the dimensions for the radiator, which most people don't talk about, but this is a good one. It's 273, 120 by 27 millimeter. So, about normal, not typical. I think the freezer 2 or 19 millimeter thick. She's a little thicker, so we're going to open her up. Take out this foam. And this is what the boxing looks like. And I won't lie, I will give them credit. The packaging is quite nice. Okay, let's go ahead and take the fans out first. Let's take a look at these guys. Come on out of here, boys. Okay. So, let's start with the fans. We got two 120 mil fans. Looks like we have... Yep, 
daisy chain ability um, typical I mean with fans like these so typical PWM fan control hmm interesting now these don't have rubber mounts like most fans that I'm usually dealing with hmm we'll see how that works out in the end see so, yep sit those aside grab the next item okay more cabling this one actually has so if you don't have if you don't want to run your uh, RGB through your motherboard um, this actually does have a controller right here that comes with it so you can use a controller if you want to now I actually have a RGB hub in this already it's um, the easy kit DIY kit that comes with these fans that I have um, so I'll probably just plug into that and run my RGB off of that so that's the cables and they're black so they're not as noticeable what else we got here okay well some serious mounting hardware and we look like we have a fan splitter cable which makes sense I mean that's gonna be normal now the nice thing is ooh, I will bring this I will pull this out to show you guys this one this is actually pretty nice now I probably won't be using this thermal paste um, because I like to use MX4 Arctic Silver. Um, I really like this stuff. So um, it is nice that they actually come with a nice little tube here of this. So that's nice. It's not pre applied, I believe. It's not pre applied. No, nope, it's not pre applied. Decent size die on that. Um, so it is nice. So you do have your thermal paste that comes with the kit. A um, lot of pieces in here. So we'll have to sort through that and see what we're actually going to need. Like I said, I'm going to save you guys the time of watching like the builds and stuff. Um, Thermal Take does actually have a video uh, on YouTube that is them installing one of these. So if you're interested in watching a build video on that, check that video out. So that is what's that is last what's in the box. So set this guy down. And here is our radiator. And actually, I won't lie, it is very light. Um, it is made from aluminum. Typical. I mean, right here, most of the radiators are. So take that off. Take this plastic off. So you guys can see. Yeah, I'm on. See, I like unboxing stuff when I haven't even looked at them yet because it kind of gives you guys a thing. So let's take a good shake. Mm, there's a little slosh, but not very much. So that means they got most of the air out when they did it. Um, decent amount of tubing on here. So I'm hoping I can mount it like this. In my case that's what I'm hoping for um, we'll have to wait and see um, these do bend a little bit they do have elbows that move which is nice um, the cold plate very nice it's very it's a decently large size cold plate um, I don't see any blemishes or anything um, it looks like it does have these particular screws that are really tricky to get your hands on um, so they don't really they definitely don't aren't making this so it's easy for you to get into a work on so We got our let's see here looks like a Three pin RGB header and a CPU fan header, which is typical I mean that's going to be normal in uh, This type of setup so it does have separated separated RGB so um, Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this guy. I'm gonna finish up this stress test I got running right now um, it looks like she is holding dead steady at 90 degrees C, but the overclock that I was running um, has throttled back because um, I had it set to 4.1 gigahertz and currently it is running 3.9 gigahertz. So it definitely it has thermally throttled, which we're not surprised just because, I mean, it is a 6 core 12 thread processor. Needs some to get good cooling. So I'll go and go ahead and end that test. And then we're going to go ahead and put this guy in. And then we'll run that test again. And we'll go back to and give you the data and the conclusion. Tell you what I think. And is this worth, is this going to be a good budget option for an AIO? So stick with us. We'll get to it. done with the uh, intro and the unboxing and all that stuff now as you can see behind me and I did have a little b-roll footage of what it looked like when I was done 
Um, as you see behind me, it's in the system now. Um, it's running really, really well. Um, I will have um, put right here on the screen um, uh, the stock cooler at idle. Idle around 65 degrees. And um, when it was under full load, it would reach 90 degrees. And then it would thermally throttle, taking itself back down. Now, of course, this is a 31 or 3600 Ryzen 5, uh, six core, 12 thread, and I have it overclocked to 4.1 gigahertz. So, yeah, when I had the stock cooler on there, it would bring it back down, thermally throttle once it hit 90 degrees, and it would bring it down down to 3.5 gigahertz. So, definitely taking a hit there. So, this little guy right here, the thermal take, was it TH240? Um, now this one here, uh, this one ran at the at idle. It runs at 32 degrees Celsius, of course. And then under full load, same load as the other one, and I applied both of these for an hour, so I want a good stress test on both of them. Um, same 4.1 gigahertz uh, overclock, and I got a top temperature of 65 degrees under that whole load that's the highest it ever got and the fans are on a um slow curve they're not even on a peak curve um i think the highest percentage they got to is like maybe 30 or 40 percent um not very bad at all and yeah this thing is i won't lie this thing's pretty solid um i'm really enjoying it because i'm able to run my overclock and i never have an issue with it which is awesome so if you do have something like a 3600 or a newer or bigger processor i would definitely recommend getting an aio so, what's this video really about? This video is about, is a budget cooler, something like the Thermal Take um, TH240, any good? Is it worth your time, or should you spend more money on getting something like a Kraken or something like that? Now, if you're looking into getting the, the ones that have the um, pumps that have like the displays and stuff on them, yeah, you're gonna be definitely spending money on that. But after trying this one out, and giving running through the tests and trying everything else, else on it yeah i would definitely recommend this if you're looking in the budget line of aios this is definitely a pretty good one um the only downside i would say i would say con for this particular um, um setup is i believe the fans are a little louder than what i had in here before um i had the easy diy uh fans in here before actually i still do they're up here on top in the back but because they're 120 by 127, I couldn't use those fans on this radiator, so I had to go with the stock fans that came with it. They're a little loud, and of course I am running a pull method, as you can see right here. I'm running a pull, um, because unfortunately the front of this case won't allow me to put the fans on the outside to do a push method. So I'm doing a pull, and the radiator sits on that side. So that's, unfortunately this case, it says it's able to take a radiator, but Unless you're really, I mean, unless you want to do some modifications, like I had to do with this case, unfortunately, um, you're only, the biggest you're probably going to get is a 120 in this. This is an, a Pivia Prodigy case. It's a it's a micro ATX case. Um, but if you got something like a mid tower or something that has something bigger, you're not really going to have any problems. And of course, as you can see, um, I do run the tubes um, to the bottom because I'm a mechanic. I work on cars every day. I know how coolant systems work. It's simple. Air will always try to find the highest point. Highest point in this system is the top of this radiator right up here. Not the pump, which is right here. It's the radiator. So any air that's going to build up in this system will over time, I mean, it's normal. It's, I mean, these tubes over time will eventually evaporate and let air in. So any air is going to get up here. Trust me, if you, if you want more in-depth detail, um, Gamer Nexus has a great video on it. Uh, J2Sense has a couple of good videos about it. Um, now, if you're also concerned about placement of the radiator, uh, Bitwit, he has a great video about how um, he placed each one of his components. He did a bunch of different tests and showed that actually front uh, mount is actually one of the better mounts to have. So, unfortunately, in this case, I could not, I just couldn't. I mean, this is the only thing I could do. And I, like I said, I had to modify the case just to get it to fit. Like, I couldn't put it on top. Because, unfortunately, my VRMs on this board, which I do have a video on, um, 
it would hit the it would hit the VRMs on the back, the heatsink for that. So I couldn't do that. If I had my ASRock board that I had in here before, it probably would have fit and I could have easily done it. But trust me, I've I did a bunch of research to try to determine what was the best placement for best cooling all stuff, and I've run a bunch of different um, CPU, GPU benchmark, all that stuff. And also the nice thing about this board here is it really uh, has a bunch of different temperature sensors around it. So I was able to take the temperature readings before I put installed this and then after I installed it, I checked it. I'm not running anything different. Like my GPU doesn't run any hotter than it did before. It almost runs identical to the stock cooler I had in here before because before my original setup was one in the back, two on the top, and I had two in the front intake. Nothing's changed. Like, I haven't raised the temperature in here. Now, maybe if I was using something like a 5950X, yeah, it would be warm, but that's also a much warmer processor than the 3600. So, Because um, I did put a post there on Twitter. And honestly, that I'll post, all that was for was to thank my wife, who is a wonderful, wonderful woman, who got me this AIO for our anniversary. I... Totally blew me away. Didn't think she was ever going to do something like that. So that's the reason I made the post. It wasn't to get criticisms or say my system is better than somebody else. It was just simply to say thank you. And for everyone who actually liked it, thank you. Appreciate it. So, um, well, so, uh, like I said, this is kind of probably a little shorter video. I mean, I know I didn't have a rant there. But conclusion is, I would definitely recommend this AIO. And there will be a link for this in the description below. It's an affiliate link. If you do click on it and you end up buying it, it does help out the channel. So look into that. It's like I said, it always helps out the channel. So, so that's all I got for you today. Um, I can hear my dogs barking upstairs. <laughs> um, uh, we do have some more review videos coming out. I got the Rocket um, Sova and a couple. I got some uh, Series X videos coming out soon. Stuff to do with the testing out the Series X and all that stuff. Is it a new computer? You know, kind of thing. Thank you for joining me today. Um, we stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, myself, uh, Verdon66, and Carhartt713. Seven, um, or 317. I can't believe I just butchered that. <laughs> um, we stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. And we, of course, have every, every new review videos on our YouTube channel every Wednesday. So do check them out if you're interested. And if you are new to this channel, um, consider subscribing. And if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. That always helps out the channel, too. So, And, of course, every month we do our Amazon gift card giveaways. Um, the date that this video goes live, we should have one the following week, I believe. So thank you for joining me today. I am Lemon76 of Wonder Dad Gaming. Thank you for joining me today. And as always, 